Well, it was great to uh, get a win for the seniors uh, on Saturday um, and to build some confidence. Uh, we're on to Wake Forest right now. Um, you know, Wake Forest is uh, having a really good football year. Uh, we've got to play them at home. I'm sure it's their senior day as well. And uh, they've got a good football team. You know, on offense, uh, you know, John Wolford's been their quarterback uh, as of late. Obviously not this past Saturday, but... We anticipate we'll, we'll, we'll face him. Uh, Cade Carney, uh, freshman running back, done a really nice job for them. Uh, Cam Serenay, their tight end, and they got two receivers, Hines and Lewis, that I think are really good football players. On, uh, on defense, they've always been very, very sound on defense. I'm really impressed. You know, Dave Clawson, to me, is, is an outstanding coach. Everything they do is sound. Everything they do is, is fundamentally sound and schematically sound. On defense, I think they've always done a great job defensively. Uh, their players play their scheme uh, very well, and they're confident in it. And uh, this is no exception. I can't pronounce Duke's last name, number 53. Heck of a football player, big kid, 6'4", 270. Um, and I think Markel Lee is, is really, truly their linebacker. I think he's the best player on their defense. I think he's fantastic. Uh, you have their safety, Jesse Bates. Uh, corners are outstanding. I think they're really good in the back end. I mean, they're a really good, sound football team, a very opportunistic football team. They've played a lot of games this year where people have had four and five turnovers on them. And, uh, you know, I think they play really sound. I think they're sound in the coverage. They had five picks, I think it was, against Indiana. And uh, so they're, they're, they're playing really good football. Um, they're coming off a tough two-week run like we had. And... Uh, you know, I think these are two teams that are going to meet each other. They're bowl eligible, uh, and, and we're trying to get bowl eligible. So it should be a heck of a game down in uh, North Carolina. All right, any questions? Coach, the last two years, uh, Wake Forest has really struggled under Hawthorne. This year, they're bowl eligible. Based on the tape, what's the biggest change you've seen uh, from them last year to this year and how you've done it? You know, I think they're pr fairly similar team. Um, you know, I think I would say that one of the things you see on tape is I, I use the word opportunistic. Um, give credit, you know, I mean, the ball, they're playing people turn the ball against over against them, and they've capitalized on those. They've created some of those turnovers, and they've got some of those turnovers. But I, I don't know, I'm not studying their turnover ratios, but, I mean, that's been really good to them. And uh, I think they're, you know, uh, an older team. A develop, you know, their, their team's maturing, and... Uh, you know, and, and, and I think that uh, they've been able to capitalize on those games where, you know, go back and, you know, they, they, they played, uh, you know, out of conference Indiana. Indiana, they were able to get five turnovers on Indiana. Um, and, uh, you know, I forgot how many turnovers Duke had, but they played Duke really well. Uh, they played Virginia um, and uh, uh, they played Army, you know, but Army, I guess Army, you know, Army won that game. But uh, um, I just think that, you know, they, they, they've had a nice, steady climb. Um, this is a good football team. This is a sound football team, both sides of the ball, fundamentally. And uh, you know, I think Dave's just done a great job. I have a lot of respect for Dave. You know, I've known Dave a long time. And so I really have a lot of respect for him and his, for his staff because, you know, he does, he does a lot, you know, you know with – you know, developing the players that he has. I mean, I think we're probably a you know we're, we're matchup teams. I mean, you know, you, you know, and um, that's where we are. Um, you know, uh, each one of us, each team probably has their strengths and weaknesses, um, obviously. Um, but you know, we're we're we're, we're kind of match up, and uh, you know, kind of heading down the home stretch within a game of each other, and uh, that's where it is. Hopefully. Uh, we're going to play our best ball this week, one game season. And I'm sure they're saying the same thing down there. So, you know, uh, we've got to overcome, you know, being on the road, you know, and uh, that's our mindset. What's, uh, what's the conversation unless you beat UConn, uh, bowl eligibility, beat UConn? Uh, with that in mind, how important uh, or what would it mean, I guess, uh, in the scope of the season to, to return to a bowl game? Well, first off, it's however many more weeks of practice with a young football team, which is so important to us. You know, it's it's the uh, continued development. I mean, at this, when you have, you know, like we have, you know, 
21 some odd players coming back on offense that have had meaningful playing experience this year and 19 coming back on defense even though we're losing four um we, you know there's a lot of young football here to, to mature that's the beauty of bowl season and uh, so that you know you're you're dying for that right and then of course the obvious is you know you continue to play one more game it's an it's kind of a marker you know going to a bowl it's a goal you set in the beginning of the year you know and uh one that's still alive, and, 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 and you know, it's, it's, it's a marker because it's a marker for success, and then it's a marker for growth and development. So I think it's huge. I mean, all college football players, you know, they all, you know, I mean, coaches, everybody. That's what we, you know, that's what we talk about. Get to a bowl. Get to a bowl. And so I think uh, it's, it's huge. Well, you know, I, I think this, I think it speaks to the fact that, you know, we took over a program that when I came here, we knew this would be up to a five-year rebuild. If we can do that, that sets a marker for, you know, getting there, um, you know, three out of four years. And uh, so that's important. I mean, that doesn't define where we are and what we're trying to get to, but it gives you that extra time. And I mean, I can't sit here and tell you that it's a major deal for us. I mean, you know, this is this is something that's it's for our team. I mean, very important. Let's, let's say it like that for us. And, and every player and every coach feels that way right now. I mean, we are not that we're not every week. We come in here every week. We talk about this. But I mean, we are pedal to the metal. And there's a great energy and a great focus and a great vibe on our team. And uh, there was last week. Like I said, I, I came in here last week and I said we had the best Tuesday we ever had. I didn't just say that. I'm not one of those guys just say things just for effect. I mean, we had the Tuesday. I, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating we're going to have a great week this week. I mean, guys are jacked up and, you know, and, and it's awesome. That's what you want to be at the end of the year, you know, as you're developing your team. You, you want to see that, you know, and those are really the, the real markers of, you know, the mindset of a football team. Um, you know, this team has had a lot of resolve. I mean, I think they love football, and I think they've seen growth on the tape. There's been disappointments now, and uh, we all know that. But never did I ever one time feel like, oh, you know, we got to pump this thing up. And, you know, just because I think that they feel good. This isn't coach talk now. They feel good about where we're headed. OK, and, and, and when they don't, that's when you get, you know, that that kind of look sometimes. But that's not the case here, you know. And um, so but there's been major disappointments. I think, it, you know, coming off the, the hardest thing, we, we, we had a couple of hard points in the season early on going, you know, down in Virginia Tech was hard. And then the two we knew we had that three game run where we were able to get one of them and we missed on two. And those two back-to-backs were hard, but it wasn't, it certainly wasn't deflating. It was disappointing. And that's what I think you saw last week was, you know, a real energy going into that week. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to play our best game. And we kind of didn't play our most complete game. Okay. So I think that tells you a lot, really. And now we're going into this game, and it's another big game on the road. I mean, we got a, we got a handle going on the road. We've done that before, though. We did it at NC State. But we've got to go on the road and play well. And, you know, down at the, when you get to the last game of the season, you know, you know, you're either, you know, you're either see the finish line 50 yards, and, and no matter how tired you are mentally or physically, you're kicking it into overdrive, right? And, 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 and sometimes some teams, you know, are, are, are beat up and tired and have a hard time doing that. Right now, I like the vibe on our team. And I'm looking forward to practice tomorrow because that's a good barometer to me. But, I mean, we practiced yesterday, and there was a lot of energy. The, the day after we played, there was a lot of – and it was like 30 degrees out there last night with the wind cutting through. And it wasn't any place anybody was all jacked up to be. But, I mean, they were hooting and hollering and having a good old time last night getting getting our, you know, our Sunday style of practice in there, which is a lot of fundamental work and stuff like that. So, that's I mean, really um, it's really encouraging. You know, it's really great, and um, I'm, I'm happy about that. Mike Noel become a reliable, confident kicker? I think he's, I think, Rich, he's absolutely more confident.
There's no doubt about that. And, um, you know, he's, he's got a smile on his face and, you know, he's gotten uh, honored in front of the team for a couple of performances. And, it, you know, it boosts, it boosts anybody's self-confidence, you know. And uh, Mike has given us everything he's got, really. And he's, he, he has been very resilient. And you got to admire that, you know. I do. I admire th things like that. Like when you see a guy take a beating, and keep ticking, and then go on to play what is his best ball right now, right? And, um, you know, uh, I, I, I admire that. And it's a sign of toughness, mentally, mental toughness. You know, when do you, when do you measure people? When it's all great? No, you measure people when it's hard. And he's, he's been in some tough situations, you know? Is he a, is he a finished product? No. I mean, but he, Mike Knoll is absolutely giving us, without a doubt, at this stage, up through today, that guy has given us everything he has and i appreciate that and i admire that do you think giving him both jobs has made him better in both keeping him sharper you know i can't look in the eye and tell you that you know like yeah i mean i wouldn't argue with that i'm just saying you know i just think he's had the ability to grow with some confidence you know it's not all been perfect but you know he's he is maturing in, 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 in confidence. You can see it in his in the way he carries himself. Forget about on the field. Just I'm talking about just in pra everywhere, you know. And uh, you know, sometimes adversity can really um, rattle guys and, and, and knock them to the ground. And sometimes it can harden them a little bit. And I think it's kind of solidified him a little bit, you know. And so we keep we just keep rolling, you know. You never know what's behind door number two. You just keep rolling. And uh, that's kind of, you know, what we're doing. You know, we're all just keep rolling. You know, we've all, you know, um, hit adversity. And, uh, you know, the old saying, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know what I mean? A lot of times coaches will say that they see improvement, but ne the results aren't necessarily there at the end of the year. Maybe that was the case last year. I don't, I don't know if you felt that way. But mm. this, how important is it to actually have the results? Now, you know, either a bowl game or just a, a lot more wins yeah. so that the players see that there's success. That's why they have a good vibe right now. You, you know, that question you're asking, which is a good question, is, is kind of answered in what we talked about. That's why there's a great vibe on our team right now, just for what you just said. You know, last year it was just tough, you know. I mean, you know, I don't even want to go back. I mean, it was just tough we played great on defense but we struggled on offense and it was hard to you know you couldn't really move it in any direction you wanted to because of the you know quarterback situation and a lot of other things now we're we're, we're now we're building you know we say you know and, and we feel great about our young quarterbacks and everything you know so the vibe is the vibe is outstanding and you know nothing's going to kill that vibe right now uh, no outcome right now is going to kill that vibe. Obviously, to go down and win this game and get to a bowl game buys us more time, buys us continued momentum. But, but nothing is going to stop that from, from, from growing right now because that's, they've seen that and they taste that and now, now they know it. And, and, and that's all part of this. It's all the important piece of this. We're only going to continue to grow and have more now, you know, uh, experience, uh, experienced guys all over the field. And that's only going to continue to grow now. Now the question is, is, you know, we got to go fight to buy those weeks. That's really, those weeks are so important right now. It doesn't seem like much, you know, but when you talk about, you know, I forgot the number of practices it is right now because I don't have my mind on that right now. I got my mind on what's in front of us. But those weeks mean a lot to every single program. And, uh, and, and every head coach would tell you that. And, uh, you know, so... Um, you know, we'd love nothing more than to do that, and it all happens with this week. So uh, there's that, that's why there's, there's a lot riding on this right now. And, um, and we want to see ourselves, you know, we haven't had a great opportunity this year to be able to, you know, take some success and, 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 and have a chance to keep building it week to week. The way it's fallen, it just hasn't happened like that, really. And this is an opportunity for that to happen. And that's important, you know, so we'd like to get that done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
we felt really great all preseason camp with both of those guys. That was a, they, they kind of played different spots, really. But the development of those guys was fantastic, you know. And that's why when we lost Garrison this year, it really hurt us because we had a mindset on the way we were going to play and the groupings we were going to play with. And we didn't really, per se, have a replacement for Garrison, his style, okay, which you know I, I call like a hybrid tight end. And uh, so that, that kind of stunned us just a little bit because we, we didn't have, at that time, anybody – younger that was really getting ready to take that step at that point in time. Now, since then, we've activated Ray Martin and we've activated uh, Korab Idrizi, right? And those guys, like Korab really and Garrison are very similar, okay? But, you know, we, we hadn't, he wasn't ready to play yet then. Um, but the growth of those guys has been phenomenal. I mean, we, yeah, we knew Tommy was getting ready to have a great year. You know, he's, he's going into his, uh, he's into his third year right now. He had a chance, now Tommy had a chance to redshirt. And uh, so physically and mentally, he's playing his best football right now, clearly. And and Chris had redshirted and then was a redshirt freshman. And he was, uh, his growth was so fast, like so, it was ha it was coming so quickly, you know, that that, that, that that was crushing, it really was. But, you know, he's going to be great and he's going to be back and he's, you know, and now we've we've developed Ray and, and Idrizzi and, and, and those guys are really going to be good football players. I, I don't know if you saw on the field, not to get away from your question, but I don't know if you saw on the field, but on the film, I mean, you guys, I, I'm assuming you rewatched the TV copy or whatever. I mean, Ray, Ray hit a couple guys and I mean, they were hit. I mean, and that is meaningful because in you, in that style of runs, you know, that's, that's punishing and that, over time really has an impact. So, and then, you know, you saw Korab with a great catch, and he is, we were using him earlier a couple weeks coming in and cracking defensive ends, and those guys are physically young. They're going to be really good football players. So the emergence of Tommy, you know, we have Mike Giacome back after he had that um, season-ending injury, and, and you know, Mike's been here a while. Mike's been a great influence on these guys, and, and I think that they – you know these 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 young guys have really are really starting to really starting to come on. And uh, Tommy is obviously the the oldest one of them who's played some football, and now he's playing his best football, and he's got great football ahead of him right now. I mean, really good football ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. matters i mean like on defense like on offense you need to be explosive harold creates explosive plays and um you know he missed training camp and he really wasn't you know he, he had to play himself over the first few weeks back into form because he missed the whole camp and you know he did that so i mean he's 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 very uh he's an explosive guy off the edge again whether you're pressuring or whether you're coming in a four man or even a three man he can get isolated one on one. He he really can get home, and uh, you're seeing that emergence. Yeah, I mean, his fundamental growth has been phenomenal. You know, and I credit that to Coach Pascaloni and what he's done with that whole D line. Because if you look at that whole D line, the whole D line's growth has really been phenomenal. I mean, you know, I know you see Zach Allen out there too. I mean. And Zach's really coming on. And, of course, Ray was out, uh, you know, the last uh, uh, couple of weeks. And, uh, or was it one week at this point? I lose track of time here. But, you know, Ray was having great development. And then uh, Cav is playing well. And uh, he's just done a great job. Truman, good apple. I mean, he's playing elite football right now. Really. Our defensive front is playing outstanding. Uh, you know, Connor, Connor Strahan and Ty Schwab and Matt Milano, the three linebackers, are playing their best football right now. Like we, you know, obviously we missed Connor for he didn't play in the Syracuse game, and then he was kind of really dinged up for about four weeks in there with the shoulders, and so we kind of lost a little bit there because he was dominant in training camp now, and then he got hurt against Georgia Tech, and then he went in from Georgia Tech right probably through like five games. He was kind of didn't play in one and dinged up, but those guys right now are playing really, really. Our front is playing really, really well, and uh, you know, so you know. We need that play. I mean, that's that's the kind of play you need. You know, you you need you need defensive ends that can can get home. I mean, those are explosive plays on the defensive side of the ball, kind of like perimeter people are sometimes, or a tailback is home run hitting on the offensive side of the football. They kind of go hand in hand. So we're, you know, 
he has a chance, Harold, to become, you know, one, you know, one of our better pass rushers probably here in a long time, I would say. I you don't have the history handy in front of me. I know we've had some really good ones, but he can be one of those. Okay, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.